Welcome to the Blooming League of Original Podcasts. Welcome to the second episode of And the EGOT Goes To, a breakdown and predictions podcast for the major U.S.-based award shows. Today, we continue our first season with a nine-episode miniseries on the 2023 Tony Awards. I'm your host, Spencer, and with me is our panel. Hello, I'm Kate Reinking, and I am on TikTok as Theater is Life, um, because theater is life. And I love seeing shows, love talking about these plays. Plays uh, were my favorite shows in the past season, so I'm really excited to delve into this today. My name is Ashley Hufford. I'm Ashley Hufford on TikTok, Instagram, all over the place. Uh, And I'm really excited. I'm almost done with plays. I have technically three, but I did see um, Oscar or Sign of Sydney Burstina, uh, bam. So I would say two till I'm done. Hi, I am JT Tranberg. You can find me on uh, Instagram and TikTok, uh, JT Does NYC, where I explore this wonderful city that I live in with a focus in theater and the performing arts. I uh, am way behind on plays, but I'm going to catch up. And I'm excited to talk about these plays today um, and to see what everyone else has seen um, so that I can rearrange my order of importance. Today, we're going to start by discussing our predictions for the play categories. The eligible shows are The Kite Runner, Leopoldstadt, Cost of Living, Death of a Salesman, The Piano Lesson, Top Dog Underdog, Walking with Ghosts, A Christmas Carol, Ain't No Mo, Ohio State Murders, The Collaboration, between Riverside and Crazy, Pictures from Home, A Doll's House, Life of Pi, Fat Ham, Peter Pan Goes Wrong, The Thanksgiving Play, Prima Facie, Good Night Oscar, Summer 1976, and The Sign in Sidney Brewstein's Window. So we will start with our first category, Best Revival of a Play. I have Death of a Salesman, Piano Lesson, Top Dog Underdog, and Ohio State Murder. I have a... Uh... Doll's House. I haven't seen Doll's House, so I didn't. It is a very good production of a play that I detest. That's, I mean, that's a good way of putting it. That's honestly like a perfect way of putting it. It's a very, I I also did not particularly like A Doll's House, but I understood what they were doing and I appreciated the production. Yeah, Um. when it comes to A Doll's House, I have seen previous productions of A Doll's House. Um, I have not seen this production of A Doll's House, but I have heard uh, mixed to positive things about it. Like people definitely are. I, it wasn't my favorite thing, but it it's a good thing. Um, so I definitely can see it being nominated. My personal favorite show, uh, favorite play of the season is in this category, uh, which is Top Dog Underdog. I think it's just a masterclass in acting. It's a masterclass in direction. It's a masterclass in um, transition, in timing, in um, just, it, 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 if there was no Life of Pi, um, give it all of the all. See, I, I think, I think it does have a decent chance here, especially because unfortunately, like I don't have either of those guys being nominated an actor because I just don't think there's room. And so I almost wonder if that's, well, there's just so much. There's so much. There's so many plays this year. That's a hot take. I also have neither of them as actor because I think they, I think they end up canceling each other out. Well, yeah. when we get to actor, I'll have a different The same. Which is fine. Which is fine. I just, I think, and I think this is where they could get honored for that. For that performance right 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 but yeah i mean i love it was one of my favorite places of the season two and i think they're so incredible i just like couldn't find a spot Mm -hmm. to only honor one of them and i because they're both going in is is one going in lead one going featured um uh i don't think we know yet right so that's that also is the thing if i is that if, if that that could change some things but if they're both going in leading i don't know i don't think I kind of think they both cancel each other out for a spot to be, yeah, I kind of agree. Yeah. Um, and so I just want to point something out. Um, can we just look at these um, revival of a play nominees and just look at the glorious blackness of this category um, yeah. Yeah. on stage and off um, from the cast to producers? It is, it's glorious. I love it. I want some more of it. <laughs> um, I, de- as far as um, piano lesson and death of a salesman go, I do feel like there's a lot 
of, uh, for lack of a better term, vehicle star power that is there in those two casts um, that may be able to sway um, some of the Tony voters. But I definitely see Top Dog Underdog being in like the front runners list of this category. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever seen Death of a Salesman. And I like honestly cannot imagine it with white people. Like I think it would be literally intolerable with white people. Like the amount of sympathy you feel for Wendell Pierce in that, where I feel like if it was anyone else, I'd be like, this guy sucks. (laughs) Well, especially because like when you cast Wendell Pierce, um, like when you cast a black man in that role, there's something that is outside of his control that is fighting against him. Uh, right. Whereas when you cast a white man in that role, it's like, it's just the fact that you suck. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing going against you at all. And again, I, because I haven't seen it before, like, I feel like he, and again, we're now we're getting kind of into actor, which I know is not our next category, but like, I feel like you're getting a performance of like his mental health and like his like deterioration is like so obvious. Mm-hmm. And I don't, again, I don't know if that's like a thing that comes across normally, but like, I feel like he was just so good at portraying that, that it really like, to me was like a definitive, like it was such an incredible performance. And like Death of a Salesman was not a show I went into like excited about. And I was like, really like could not take my ass off the stage. Like I thought it was really, really compelling. And it was three hours long. Yeah, it was. And I'm not. Well, that's what I was just about to say is that it is three hours long. I mean, I I can get bored very easily in three hours. Mm -hmm. And I was, it's hard to make a three hour play interesting Mm -hmm. just in any circumstance. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that, uh, I think that production did a really great job of that. That's yeah. bold to say the year after the Lehman trilogy. Was- I was literally about to be like, we love a three-hour play <laughs> okay. here. I didn't see Lehman trilogy, and it is one of my largest regrets. Oh, it, it was, was right incredible. Before I started to like try and see everything. Yeah, I was still like sporadically seeing things. Do we feel like like those three are definitely in, and and the fourth spot is either Ohio State Murders or Doll's House, or do we think that one of those could could be swapped out with something else i i don't necessarily know though personally i have a doll's house as a guarantee nominee and then piano lesson is my final just squeezed by that's also what i have that's i have i have piano lesson to me is the one that could go could go in for uh, any of the others best direction of a play i have Leia Polstadt, life of pi fat ham prima facie and top dog underdog i have none of those i have Top Dog, Underdog, Fat Ham, Life of Pi, and Peter Pan Goes Wrong. Um, but I have uh, Stevie Walker Webb for Eight No Mo, <laughs> Michael Arden for Christmas Carol, um, uh, and then Rachel Chapkin for Thanksgiving Play, and then Life of Pi and Doll's House. But you could talk me into squeezing uh, Sahim Ali for Fat Ham as well. I actually agree with your choices much more than mine. <laughs> Except you know, you know that like like Ain't No Mo is gonna get snubbed, and Stevie Walker Webb, despite having the best direction this year, is going to be completely overlooked, and I'm already mad about it. Because <laughs> yeah, I have Thanksgiving Play, Life of Pi, Fat Ham, Doll's House, and Top Dog Underdog, so kind of a mix of the two. <laughs> if if Leopold Stad gets nominated in this category, I personally will be incredibly upset because I think it's a good play with horrible direction. And I think he probably will get nominated. I'm just refusing to acknowledge Leopold not getting any nominations, but that's just my personal. <laughs> no, I. it deserves a best play nomination. It does not deserve a best play win. Correct. Correct. Yeah, and, it's, and I think it is going to win and it's going to devastate me in a year of so many good plays. I'm already mad about it. I'm already, literally already upset about it. So now we enter the design categories, which I think are probably the easiest to predict the winner of, but the hardest to predict the nominations of. Correct. For, uh, That's a good way of putting that. Plays. Correct. So we'll start with sound design of a play. I have Good Night Oscar, A Christmas Carol, Life of Pi, Death of a Salesman, and The Piano Lesson. I have A Christmas Carol, Ain't No Mo, The Collaboration, and Life of Pi. Yeah, I have Good Night Oscar, Ain't No Mo, A Christmas Carol, Life of Pi, and Death of a Salesman. I feel like I need Death of a Salesman in there now, now that you guys mention it. Um, I have Life of Pi, Good Night Oscar, Ain't No Mo, Christmas Carol, and Fat Ham. Um, and if I did squeeze in Death of a Salesman, it would probably be over Ain't No Mo. Yeah, I, I was between Fat Ham and Ain't No Mo, and ultimately I put Ain't No Mo, but I already 
think I will go back to Fedham. <laughs> when God, you said it, I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> so my nomination for Goodnight Oscar is based on the Goodman production. I have not seen well, the Broadway production yet. I talked to a bunch of people who were went to, went to it last, it was invited dress last night. And I think that mm-hmm. just from everything I'm hearing about the show, I think it probably has the b- best chance of winning sound design just because of like, but um, I think Christmas Carol has like, ha- also actually has a pretty good chance. Cause I think that what yeah. they did in the Christmas Carol is like so stunning. So cool. <laughs> I think cool. Christmas Carol could take, sorry, I know we're not doing light, light, but like sound and lighting. I feel like Christmas Carol is up there. Yeah, yeah. that's where I have Christmas Carol like in all caps. Imagine Christmas Carol taking lighting two years <laughs> in, the, in this decade. Too wild. <laughs> For two completely different productions. And speaking of lighting design, we're at lighting design of a play. I have Life of Pi, The Piano Lesson, Death of a Salesman, A Christmas Carol, and Ohio State Murder. I have A Christmas Carol, Life of Pi, Fat Ham, and that's it. Um... I have Life of Pi, the Piano Lesson, Summer of 1976, ah. which you'll see because I thought this lighting was stunning. A Christmas Carol and Ohio State Murders. I have Fat Ham, Ain't No Mo, Life of Pi, Prima Facie, and Christmas Carol. Well, your Ain't No Mo it definitely deserves to be there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I love that lighting. Yeah. Okay, but none of them matter because it's going to go to Life of Pi. That's Carol. true. Right. I think you're probably right. I think I do. I honestly think a Christmas Carol has a tiny shot, but I think it'll probably go to Life of Pi. Well, I guess it depends. Do the projections count as lighting uh, or the projections count as scenic? Hey there, listeners. Spencer here. While the panel are off having a short intermission, I thought you might like to hear about Bloop Network's other show, Thrash and Treasure, the Torture Chamber musical comedy podcast where we torture the world's greatest artists with musicals, comedy, and heavy metal, even Tony Award winners. Now I have to ask, in your opinion, what do you define as star quality besides me. <laughs> in the context of, well, it's such a weird question. I mean, in the context of actors and actresses, I prefer character actors and actresses, so they're not stars. But, you know, if you ask me, like, who's a great movie star? Well, you know, is it that star quality when someone walks in a room and they sort of dazzle you? Yeah. You know, I'm trying to think of the last time I saw something like that. And I feel like we did a workshop that Salma Hayek was in. And I remember, despite the fact that she was completely down to earth and like not not a poser in any way there's something about her when she walked in that i just used the term like a term like star quality which i would never use <laughs> normally so that's the long answer yep uh how have your nerve levels changed from the opening night of the full monty compared to the opening night of tootsie is there any change in in how you approach it are you nervous are you couldn't give a shit no i care because it's my livelihood you know but i don't i, I don't mean it like that I, you know i don't mean it, like nonchalant <laughs> calm no no i totally yeah, i totally sorry. know what you mean i mean i i get it you know i i don't like going to opening nights and i don't like going to waiting online for food and i don't like waiting online for with a publicist with a tag around his or her neck on a red carpet like i don't like that stuff so much so that my wife the, the last two times said, we're, we're going and you're going to at least pretend that you're having a good time because <laughs> it's a drag for, it's such a drag for her. But, uh, you know, I get nervous for myself a little bit, but a lot for the people who really care, you know, it's about people who are friends of mine or in my show, but it feels to me like going to the dentist any, and then you sit there and I usually know though, like I, I was pretty sure we would all win for band's visit. And the other times I was pretty sure I wasn't going to win. I wasn't. And then for Tootsie, because I'd already won one, I just didn't care. Like I just, I wanted the show to win because I knew the show needed to win to keep running, even though it was a big, seemed to be a big hit and great reviews. So I was nervous and then it lost. And then I forgot all about being nervous anyway. So yeah. And in the end, it didn't matter because COVID closed Broadway anyways. So Um, yes, unfortunately. You can catch Thrash and Treasure on the Bloop Network, wherever you listen to podcasts. And now back to And the EGOT Goes To. Let's go ahead and talk about costume design of play. I have Life of Pi, Top Dog, Underdog, Fat Ham, and Peter Pan Goes Wrong. That's pretty much my list, yeah. For costume? 
pretty much my list, man. I'm I'm literally going off of yeah. pictures. I haven't seen three out of those. So um I'm literally going off of pictures from Instagram <laughs> and broadwayworld.com. <laughs> Kate, you you seem to not like that list. I I just tried to make sure we're still talking about costume because that seems like a wild list. Uh, disagree. Um, I have Leopold Stad, um, Peter Pan goes wrong, Prima Facie, Fat Ham, and Ain't No Mo. So I have the same, except I have Life of Pi instead of Prima Fauci. But now you're starting to make me think that I should put Prima, but I haven't seen it, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, I I like the Ain't No Mo whole situation is actually have me like second guessing my list um because you're right you are right there's some awesome um there's a lot of commentary in cost in the costumes in that and it's cool they have a lot of really cool different costumes because of the way that the show is situated that was my thought behind it and especially in a show where you have uh you know a small set of actors playing multiple characters um even some you know in the same scene um costume plays a really big uh part in that and they do a really good job of separating um characters between pieces i mean as we were saying before before we started recording um there's so many shows this year where it's just people on stage in suits or in modern day clothing and so um obviously a lot can be done with that modern day clothing in you know telling it the story but i do think that in terms of interestingness um that this and is she's she's part. also in a suit for a good part of prima facie <laughs> <laughs> um i do think that top dog underdog has a little bit of pull here as well um due to um the characterization of each actor and their i guess dead fadness fadness if that's a word and like how they are and who they are and there was no wavering and you can put just the costumes on hangers on the stage and you would know who the character was you know what i'm saying i don't know if that makes sense like it's in my brain i don't know if that scene at the top at the like the top of the beginning of the show where he is um bringing like all, all the stuff that he stole and like he has like all those different pieces on him and like different parts of his body um, with like the ties and the shirts and all that stuff that was really cool um, little small stuff like that um, which in a in a small show like that makes you know it memorable that's yeah. like one of the things I remember the most from that show I think the costume design in Top Dog Underdog and Prima Facie is very similar it's it's subtle changes but it's like I would put those in the same category where it it, it adds so much to the production on like very small little things yeah right and it's it's well uh, thought out because you could um, easily put um, Corey in like a suit, um, a, a brown suit, and then put him in a different brown suit when he's going on the date. But no, he's putting on like this plum fly ass purple suit because this girl is coming. Up. Like you know what I'm you know what I'm saying? Like, it's very easy to like just put this character in a suit over and over again but it's like no the suit of that color matters the length of the pants matters like all of that matters so there's a lot of thought that went into it which i'm a fan of 100 now you are convincing me but i don't know where i mean maybe like Le- oh, that's the thing leopold shot the costume is like my favorite part of the show <laughs> yeah yeah leopold shot is gonna get the nom i think if i had to uh swap out any of mine for top dog underdog it'd probably be fat ham Mine might be Life of Pi. I might replace Life of Pi with that. Because I love the costuming in, in Fat Ham. I love, like, I think the costuming in Fat Ham is mm. one of those, it, it, it's, to go back to JT's point, like, you just, you see what they're wearing and it gives you exactly, like, who they are. Before they even right. speak. Yeah, yeah, before they even speak. The, like, shirt that he wears that his mom gave him with, like, Mommy's Boy or Mommy's Favorite. It's so oh, good. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. They also show in for best merch yeah. for their daddy's daddy issues t-shirt. Uh, uh-huh. Yes. And I don't know. I just I'm a huge fan of that show in general. And and Fat Ham talk about it. Yeah. And I I just think like because I I've I've been to plenty of black backyard barbecues. And that's exactly like like 
when auntie comes from church, she doesn't go home to change like anyone else would. She wears her Sunday's best to the barbecue, no matter how hot it is outside. You know what I'm saying? Or like, you know, like it's literally like that is like the thought that goes into it. You know? So now we have scenic design of a play, which is the most interesting of the design categories. But we all know the winner. Yeah. But I do think that the nominee. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, for scenic design, I have Cost of Living, A Christmas Carol, Ain't No Mo, The Collaboration, Life of Pi, and then I have Pictures from Home in like parentheses, like adjusting. You're case. so right. I forgot about Cost of Living and The Collaboration, and both of those sets are really cool. But it doesn't matter because it's going to go to Life of Pi. But I know because I have, yeah, because I have, I think we have the same, some like Life of Pi. Fat Ham, Piano Lesson, Peter Pan Goes Wrong, and A Christmas Carol. But I do think the collaboration, are, and they both were, I just, the problem, it's again, it's recency bias. So like, it's been, but I guess life, the piano lesson has been a long time too, but I just like the, that end moment in the piano mm-hmm. lesson is yeah. so cool that it's hard for me not to give it to them. It's like the opposite of Haiti, the opposite Haiti sound yeah. effect that I thought was just like shocking. <laughs> There's been a lot of really cool sets. I've, feel i feel like i definitely would have had fat ham here but i feel like what we get from that set so the, i'm sorry i feel like the things that we remember from that show um it's only one of them has to do with the set everything else is direction or performance wise um and like that transition at the end is cool um and i love it I just feel like if we're talking um, set design and the show as a whole, um, and then my, um, and you know, the show as a whole, um, I definitely think cost of living um, beats out Fat Ham in that category. Well, I also think like with Fat Ham, the things that would also count as scenic design are going to be the like, um, the reveals, all of the the ghost dad effects. Um, yeah very so true, little very things true. like that would count as scenic so like and the fact that the decorations are all like different seasons and different holidays like I think that is but yeah that that I was about to ask do we think that, yeah like the tricks and stuff that goes under scenic not under direction yeah right like when because that's what that's where I was trying to I mean I have him for both I have them for both so it doesn't really matter <laughs> but that's what I was wondering here because I think like the end the have you seen it yet uh Spencer yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Like the like the end like trick where like he disappears like which I know like we probably all knew was coming but yeah. I think that's like really cool and like when he walks back on stage I mean just um so can we discuss this category as far as ain't no more goes does anyone else have that on their list besides me for scenic design yeah I don't have it for scenic anyone else no I'm the only one I I. Maybe do I have just do I have like ain't no more a fat ham bias? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Um, but I there was like some really cool things with that set as far as as for me, it was more a lot of the transitions and the contrast where we would go from a super dark scene with you know dark lighting, dark walls, um dark costume, dark content to like this bright, like flip it to like a totally different space, um, which always holds a special place in my heart. And the thing that I really liked, which, I mean, this also is kind of direction, but I don't know, um, is the only time that we really saw um, stagehands at all was during the scene that takes place in a place where you would see stagehands. And that's the, the housewives reunion scene. And we're like, they physically brought set pieces onto the stage, which I thought was really cool, you know? Um, and I think like those, maybe I'm giving the Tony voters too much credit. That they're gonna think <laughs> about I, I just don't, like when I think of Ain't No Mo, it really comes down to, like you said, the the lighting, like the, the contrast in light and dark, that would be lighting. And then, uh, a lot of those transition decisions, that's all direction. So when yeah. I think of like the scenic design, I'm thinking of like uh, the airport and the uh, jail cell and the, the and that was very basic. Yeah, that, uh, 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 that makes sense. 
Yes. Yeah. You're right. You are 100% the, correct. The scenic design of it was elevated because of all the other elements, but I wouldn't, for me on its own, it just didn't stick out as much. Um, but I right. am, sense. I am 50, 50 on whether to include fat ham. If it's not fat ham, my fifth yes. nominee is between Riverside and crazy. Um, and this would be the only nomination. Well, the second nomination it gets. Um, but I just thought that that for all of the turntable sets that we got this year, I like that one even better than Peter Pan Goes Wrong. But I think Peter Pan Goes Wrong has the recency bias. Um, yeah. And also just the the stuff that they do with it is a little more obvious. <laughs> um, no, that set was like, we again, we've, we've had so, so, so many minimalist sets this year Yes, that I just love. I love the elaborate, like realistic, like yeah. house set that they do for, um, and I didn't have it. I don't have it on my list, but that's because I also forgot about it. So until you said it, and then I was like, oh yeah, that set was incredible. <laughs> I mean, honestly, until, until the second half of the year, that would have been my only nominee with a Christmas Carol. Like, um, isn't it funny how like, house sets just in general tend to be the better sets um I think it might because you can like really like dive into like what would this person what random item would this person have have in their home and how can we if you remember like Beetlejuice for example I, I remember like right when Beetlejuice opened at the Winter Garden David Corrin's doing this video and him being like, oh, this flower on this wallpaper was drawn by Tim Burton. And like, there's all these like little tiny things that um, that you can do in a house set because it's really this overarching thing that you can hide little Easter eggs. My, in. I will say like my, um, was it my favorite? I mean, this is a musical book. My favorite set in the last like five years was that My Fair Lady set. I thought that My Fair Lady set was like oh. one of the coolest sets I've ever seen in my entire life. And like, just because it was so, the way that they would move it in, they, they had that huge, house set but then that theater so big that they could literally just pull it to the back of the stage and then do an entire new I was like this is the coolest thing I've ever seen when that thing appeared that like changed my brain chemistry like that was like it's why honestly every single thing I've seen in there has been disappointing since and only because that set was like that's what the theater should be doing yeah again like that set is so large and they could still pull it to the back and have an entirely different like they did that and then they have the horse scene and they have the um not getting married scene where they yeah. have the, like and you're just like how even just the, the first scene on the street like it like starts with like the whole on well, like hangman last year they uh. they have that opening in in the the cell and then it the whole thing goes up like um that was very cool that was cool that was really cool. It was not a fan of the play. Nor but was, it was I, cool. but that set was amazing. <laughs> Which is why I'm very excited to go see Life of Pi. I it's have not of- seen it. We all know it's going to win. But like, just from the stills and seeing all the different scenic changes, oh, I'm like, how do they do this? I will not spoil it, but there's a moment in the second act. And once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. That was like so eye opening, like blew my mind in such a way that like I've thought about it every single day. Since. Featured actor in a play. I have Samuel L. Jackson, Andre DeShields, Nathan Lane, Chris Sullivan, and Brandon Uranowitz. Oh, Chris Sullivan. I have half of those. Um, I have Samuel L. Jackson, Brandon Uranowitz, and um, Nathan Lane. But then I also put in uh, Billie Jean Jones and Ben Rappaport. I have, uh, well, okay. I guess this is the, my, my this is Jeremy Pope. Is he featured? I put him in as featured. They're both leading, yeah. They're leading. Yeah, both and both I leading? just looked it up. Okay. Both Yaya and Corey are leading as well. See, I don't know why they do that. I don't anyway. either. Because I think... Jer- yeah, because they cancel right. each other out. They're not going to... Because Jeremy Pope is so good in the collaboration. He's so good. I forgot that show existed. I know, but he was the best part of that. <laughs> I literally was like, Jeremy Pope was in a show this year? <laughs> um. Okay, well, then I'll, put, then I'll have the exact same as Kate, because then Nathan Lane will go into that last spot. And I think Nathan Lane deserves that spot. He, he's great and no great i really player. i really liked him i just he's my fifth he's my fifth spot person so that's why i was like trying to decide and i was like oh jeremy pope but i guess he's going in as leading which is dumb so um yeah so again like i said um a lot I have, a lot of these i have not um seen um so t- this is gonna be very interesting because all of my um 
suggestions are going to be based solely on their popularity in my pop culture quota brain. Um, so my nominee and winner is Andre DeShields. <laughs> 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 I mean, he's probably gonna get nominated. So he'll probably get nominated over Billy, which is annoying to me because I think Billy is so good. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but for this category, I uh definitely um thought that Yaya and Corey would um cancel each other out, but I wrote them on both supporting and leading. Um, and then along with Andre DeShields and John David Washington. John David Washington was my favorite person in the panel lesson, but I think that it's going to go to Samuel right. Jackson because it's Samuel Jackson, which is. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, yes. is he? And is John he David leading? Washington is leading in piano lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He's the only lead. Oh, so. All right. Then we'll swap them. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I'll, there you go. I'll swap them. <laughs> all right. So then by category rounds out with Samuel L. Jackson. Um, who I did not think was great in the piano lesson i thought he was fine i i mean i thought he was i didn't think he was bad oh i thought he was fantastic i mean he was fine i was just like as as a lover of him i was disappointed by it but that might that's probably a play thing versus his part was also not it was not a big part it was a i mean it's a feature it's definitely a feature role like he's he shows up his two or three scenes are like fantastic and then he just kind of hangs out (laughs) low stakes right (laughs) So let's now go to featured actress in a play. I have Sharon D. Clark for Death of a Salesman, Krista Rodriguez for the five minutes that she's in the collaboration. What? (laughs) Rachel Rachel Brosnahan, The Sign in Sidney Brewstein's Window, Katie Finneran for the Thanksgiving play, and Crystal Lucas Perry for the I have Sharon, Rachel, I have Katie and Darcy for Thanksgiving play. And then I have Daniel Brooks for the piano lesson. This is the wild list. So for for my again, I'll preface it. Um, so I just have um, I just it just says carry on and then underline 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 for a cost of gold. the great my favorite performance of the oh, entire. Oh, you know what? Season. I think you're. I for, yes. That woman. That. Um, I put Darcy, but it's going to be either Darcy or Katie, and then I have. Uh, Danielle Brooks and Nikki Crawford for Fat Ham. Uh, Nikki Crawford, I could. It, it was really good. Um, the way that I, I don't know, maybe I'm. She no, was, you're she was correct. Fantastic. That that play was. She, she, no, like, it it that she, the, I have cost of living is in my best play. And like, but like I literally like I just it's I think and Carrie Young is incredible. I love everything Kara's ever done, but I, I'm worried that because it was so long ago and everyone's that was two plays ago at MCC, like two entire plays yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah. I mean, MCC, I don't MCC. know if I had, I literally had just come off of seeing her in Clyde's and like fell in oh. love with her and then saw her in Cost of Living, didn't even realize she was in it um, until I got there. And that performance in Cost of Living has literally followed me since i saw it no it has it had one of the, the one, one, one of the most devastating moments of the entire season when you realize what has happened it is like oh it's such a good reveal it is a brilliant yeah. reveal yeah i mean i th- that play is one of my favorites of this season i just don't think that it'll be remembered well i remember it for my nomination so hopefully the nominating committee will uh, too she's in that she's in 12th night right now right or they're that close but i heard she's incredible in that 12th night production at um scarball oh the yeah Harlem? but now it's at, they're doing it at nyu now it's at scarball center and i've heard like it's in, uh, everyone who's seen it said it's one of their favorite Shakespeare adaptations like ever so i'm sad i didn't see uh, it in harlem and i don't think i'm gonna have a chance to see it at scarball and it might have already closed but i've heard really good things uh, um, but yeah, I literally just have her and um Zoe, but I don't know if Zoe's gonna be is I haven't seen that show, so I don't know if it's if she... I don't I don't think any of the nominations matter because Sharon D. Clark yeah. is yes. taking 100%. it. Uh <laughs> I her, I I had her in leading. I didn't realize she was going in as featured. So then yeah, yeah. It's just that, that's I mean that's smart. She's is I mean that makes sense. But it it yeah. Well, especially because she didn't get last year. Yeah. So I feel like everyone's like, we owe her. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. She yeah. was also fantastic. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. It's it's both. It can be both. 
yeah. And I guess we again, I also don't know if they're going to put Rachel in featured or leading. That does not that it matters either way, but <laughs> it only matters for nominations. And so now we have oh. leading actress in a play. Um, I have Audra McDonald, Ohio State Murders, Jessica Chastain, A Doll's House, Jodie Comer, Prima Facie, and Laura Linney, Summer Night. And then I have the same, even though I think both Laura and um, Anne are Anne. Yeah, I, I had pretty much that same list. Um, I just had um, Zoe on there because I wasn't sure if she was featured or or leading because I have not seen that show. Um, I yeah, I have the exact same list. Uh, yeah. If it if it ends up only being three nominees, then yeah. I think Laura Linney gets dropped off. But... I agree too. Um, so it's, it's I think it's going to be that's a really interesting category because it's hard to nominate Laura and not nominate Jessica. Like that show is that it's literally the two of them talking directly to the audience, telling a story. So like I think it is really hard, and they're to not to give one a nominee. I mean, I'm aware that's how it works, but like. That's why it'd almost be like, just make it three and don't do that. Because this is why you need the Kate's duo category. Like that's where, that's where they go. That's where yeah. uh, top dog underdog goes. Like you get this category of like, that's where collaboration yep. goes. Like you need those categories of like, these are yep. like, they're not leading. They're not featured. They're literally, a, they're duos and they need a category. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Leading actor in a play. <laughs> um, I have Stephen McKinley Henderson for Between Riverside and Crazy. Wendell Pierce oh. for Death of a Salesman, Oscar Isaac for The Sign in Sydney Bruce Dean's Window. I'm going to butcher this. Not going to butcher Sean, H- Sean Hayes, Good Night Oscar, and Hiran Abyss Sikera for Life He's of He's good. I just, that show to me was fine. It was super, totally just a f- fine show. It exists in space. Um, I saw it early, so maybe it'll be better mm. on Broadway. I like it more, but. It was, it's three out. It's three hours. And Oscar is very good in it. So I could see him getting in there. I don't, the problem with leading actors, I literally am like, it could go any direction because I, there's so many actors this year that I have yeah. no idea where it's kind of like the, it's the supporting actress musical category or the feature actor. Like it's just, there's so many that like, I have no idea what direction they're going to go. Other than the fact that we know Sean Hayes is going to be there and he's going to win. So <laughs> it's like, um, I, I have Sean Hayes, Corey Hawkins, Wendell Pierce, Jefferson Mays, Stephen McKinley Henderson, and then Oscar Isaac as a sixth nominee, because there's so many, I think there's going to be a tie. Then that makes sense. I would, I could, I could see that happen. That makes, that makes sense to me. I only have, um, Marcel, uh, Marcel Spears, uh, and Sean Hayes. Um, and there's question marks by both of them because I, there's, I haven't seen enough um men led plays to be able to nominate happily <laughs> um i figured sean hayes would get one because he's sean hayes um and uh, if marcel doesn't get one i'm writing and never watching the 20s again um and then can we just give like jefferson mace his own category so that way he doesn't like take it away from everybody else <laughs> yeah christmas carol should get something yeah for sure because it was so good until I saw the press for Life of Pi, I was like, oh, Christmas Carol's going to take so many uh, <laughs> Tony Awards. And then I saw uh, then I saw the stuff for Life of Pi, and then I went to see that ham, and I was like, all right, uh, things are getting No, I mean, there's, what, 19 plays this year? It's like in un- 19 original yeah. new plays this year? That's It's unbelievable. And only five women <laughs> not like eligible for Best Actress. It's wild. Yeah, cause I think there's a total of is it 36 or 37 eligible shows, and so that's over half. Our last category of the day is best play. I have the nominees as Leopoldstadt, Life of Pi, Fat Ham, Prima Facie, and Cost. Of I Living. have Fat Ham, A Christmas Carol, Ain't No Mo, Pictures from Home and Life of Pi. And the first half of that category is purely because they are Black cast. That's the only reason. I don't care if they are good <laughs> or bad, but that is the only reason they're there. And if you don't like it, you can fight me. <laughs> I think whether or not Life of Pi ends up in best play is the most interesting conversation to have. Because I think there's a chance that it doesn't. Because I think... And because I think like, yeah. and I really like Life of Pi. I liked the story. I liked 
the book, a lot <laughs> of people do not. And I think, and maybe I'm just completely blinded by the scenic design of it all, but I don't have it in my best play because I think ultimately like they're going to be like, it got scenic. It doesn't need best. Wow. That would be huge. And I haven't even seen the show yet. I feel like that would be a huge snub if it doesn't get best play. A nominee. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have a, I have a, I mean, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I mean, it, it probably will, but I just, I, I feel like from every, like all, everyone I know that's seen it outside of like me and two other people have been like, oh, it's really pretty, but I don't like the story. Or like, I didn't like the book or like, I thought it was written for children. And I was just shocked because I, when I saw it in London, it was like one of the best things I've ever seen. And then people have just been so negative about it, but I don't know how the nominators feel about it. I didn't even read the reviews, so I actually don't even know what the reviews said, but positive. They're okay. positive. Yeah. They're pretty positive. Um, Cause in my opinion, Leopold Stad, Life of Pi and Fat Ham are the yeah. shoe ins And then the last two can go to whatever. Um, I had Thanksgiving play Goodnight Oscar, but I could also see it being uh, Prima Facie, especially with the Olivier yeah. win um, and how late it's coming in the season and how good she is. And it's just a good play. Um, I also did not. I Okay. I I thought Peter Van Goes Wrong was fun. It was like 40 minutes too long for me. Like, I don't want a two hour with an intermission. Peter Pan Goes Wrong. I want a. Have you seen the pro show? No, but everyone Peter says Pan that's like wrong? an hour and it's perfect. And I'm like, that's what they should have done on Broadway. Why is this show so fucking long? It is right. perfect. I, I, I love, I love mischief. I've loved mischief yeah. for a very long time since the first time I ever saw Peter Pan goes wrong. Not play that goes wrong. The first time I ever saw the play that goes wrong, which I've now seen off Broadway seven times. It's like my comfort show. Peter Pan goes wrong. When I saw it was too yeah. long, but also I had seen the pro shot before. It's the perfect length. It's the set is a lot better because obviously bigger budget. Um, but it shouldn't be a bigger budget because it's Broadway. It's millions and millions of dollars. Um, but the the set for no, because that's um, what, that's my thing is I really liked it. I just was like, <laughs> by the end, I was like, I'm ready for this to be over. <laughs> like, and that's and and yeah. not that I was thought it was bad. Yeah. I just was like, you see the same bits again, and you know what I mean. Like, and by the end, I'm like, oh, now we're just getting like all the bits all at the same time. And I was like, and then the intermission, I was like, why is there an intermission? And it's because they want to make money off merch or drinks or whatever. But I'm like, you don't need an intermission here. I was very disappointed by their merch. I went in there getting ready to spend a, the money on a t-shirt because Play That Goes Wrong doesn't have merch. And I was very I also think if I hadn't seen Play That Goes Wrong, I probably would have liked it more. But I was like, these it's some of the same yeah. shticks. And I was like, I already saw that. And I love Play That Goes Wrong. I haven't seen it off Broadway, but I want to now. Um, I saw it again, and it doesn't really have the same rewatchability, but uh, Spencer would disagree. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, the play that goes wrong is the the show. Uh, it, I feel like it's Baby's first off Broadway play. Um, it's the show that I take like all of my non theater friends to when they want to see a play, or I take my family to when they want to see a play, but they don't want to sit for two hours and watch a long musical. Um, a choice. And I'm I'm kind yeah. of over it. I need to find a new baby's first play um, because I've seen it so many times. Um, and I also I also have auditioned and made to callbacks twice, so I'm a little annoyed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, my best play was but is Leop- Leopold shot Life of Pi, Fat Ham, Good Night Oscar, and I did put Cost of Living as my fifth spot. Um, but. I could, I know it's been a long time, but I did think that it was a show that resonated a lot early in the season and I could see it getting a nomination here, but I also could see it. I didn't even like Cost Can I be honest? I didn't love it either. I just know that people really loved it and I appreciate what it is and I love her and I loved um, the show at the at New York Theater Workshop so much Sanctuary City so much <laughs> that's not yeah. giving it to her here because <laughs> that's fair because they don't have best book of a play which they should because it's they different should. things that's that like that's yeah. my thing with Leopold shot like I'm like give Le- Leopold shot best book of a play that's fine I was like giving it best play is going to inf- like I'm already so mad about the fact that it's going to win that it like makes me want to cry and I want I will be so pleasantly surprised the, if it oh, doesn't win. If Fat Ham, if like, Fat Ham takes so- it, it'll change my life. Like, <laughs> I'll like fall on the ground crying, like with joy. Literally. Yeah, and I think that that's why that category is is interesting. Um, 
And that's why I think Tony rules and regulations are interesting. It's because so many of them like don't make sense. Like it's it's best production of a play and best script of a play. How does that make there should that should be two the separate script, things? Scripts and plays are I don't know if people know this, but a script and the the play itself, two different things. It's not like it's what? That's why we have best book of a musical and best musical, because they're in fact two different things. <laughs> And we didn't give any um get any of the plays a nomination for best score, did no. we? I think they're just eligible. That's because Room is not eligible from everything I've heard. Because Room Room is supposed to have, I think, like seven or eight original songs, which is a lot of songs for a play. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> seven yeah. songs? Yeah, I mean, is wait, weird question. Is Death of a Salesman eligible for score or no? Because they sing like songs that already been written. I think that I th- I would say probably oh, not question. if I had to get. And we're starting to see announcements for, for next season as well, um, where they're using the empty theater space, especially over the summer. Um, and it'll be really interesting to see yeah. what we get um, closing wise in terms of I, these plays. Most of them are limited, I love I this think, a- Alex Edelman, Hudson little so- thing. I'm so excited. Um, I can't wait for them to announce Wolf Play at Circle and Square. <laughs> I'm, I'm manifesting, baby. I'm manifesting. In a, in a perfect world. Pure manifestation. Oh. Are any of these plays Oh, open-ended? there is. Life of Pi is open-ended. That, that's the only one that's open-ended. Um, let me look real fast. Uh, Peter Pan is 16 and a half weeks. <laughs> My favorite. I think good oh, good night, Oscar. I think is no. There's no way they do a play with a celebrity that's open ended. Yeah, August. There's a weird one. There's a weird one that I'm like, how is that? Okay. Good night, Oscar. Closing in August. Oh, it's um, Gray House. Gray House is the weird one that's open ended right now. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of And the Egot Goes To. Next week we are going to be discussing. Uh, the nominations for acting in a musical after the nominations on May 2nd. Thanks to Jen from Jazz Tunes for our logo.